The founder of East Texas State, William Mayo, had a vision of providing the opportunity to a higher education for anyone eager to learn. So East Texas State later becoming the last institution of higher learning to integrate probably wasn't part of his vision. Now fast forward to an East Texas State president who was presiding during desegregation and who also earned the school its place as the last to integrate in Texas. President G continued to deny African American students admission to East Texas State for the next 10 years. And the area of Cooper and Commerce, Texas, which were Mayo's initial and final campus sites, have a sordid past with racial injustice and by people who believed people of color to be synonymous with the inferior. So President G's exclusion of African Americans, it's not that remarkable for the area. My father, who's an East Texas State University alumni, recalled there being a Black Awareness Week on campus as well as a Miss Ebony pageant and another pageant called Miss Multicultural, at least in the year he enrolled. Now being born and raised in Northeast Texas, I am more than familiar with the racial issues that persist beneath the surface in this area. And I can at least speculate that Miss Baylor probably was on the receiving end of some sort of backlash after she was crowned, whether it was passive or direct. Then it was like all of that grinning in your face and congratulations. You know, you didn't mean that. You, you know, uh, it, it, it was fake. That wasn't really what you meant. My father actually enrolled in 76 under the McDowell administration. I asked him what the prevailing opinion about racial issues was to whites back then, and his answers were reminiscent of similar ones I've heard for years in Northeast Texas, more so in the last four. I think that the people who deny a race problem in this country right now are in complete denial or afraid of having to confront their part in it. If you look at the past, 
you know, desegregation, the civil rights movement, and you compare it to recent events after this election, it's, it's scary similar. There's, there's a lot of differences, but people are just so brazen with their racism now. They feel empowered, it seems. And people are committing hate crimes using presidential election as some kind of platform. All these old racist ideals have been brought back to life. Or they've just been lying there dormant, waiting for an opportunity to reemerge. And there is this, this element of white denial that seems to be perpetuating the problem, and it's because these people are oblivious to the privilege that comes with being white and the disadvantage that comes with being black. White people don't understand. We have no idea what it's like to be black in this country. I think that African Americans must be just so tired of the stereotypes and the double standards and being treated like they're expendable and disregarded and not knowing if they may lose their life at a routine traffic stop. It's, this problem is staring us in the face and it's been going on for a long time. And it's not gonna get any better until those that deny it take part in the conversation, engage, acknowledge this problem. And these people have got to wake up and realize that if they don't, if they keep pretending that it's not real, then they're part of the problem. They're an accomplice to it. It's time to take off the blindfold and see through this facade of equality.